All right, welcome to my talk. So in the upcoming six minutes, you will see a lot of assembly and a lot of opcodes because I will teach you guys how to write a reverse shell in ARM assembly. And you will see some examples of how to detect the corresponding opcodes with Yaga. So since we cannot possibly cover all the details of ARM assembly in six minutes, I will only give a very, very brief introduction into ARM assembly and only cover the most important instructions in order to write the shell code. And I need you to be fully focused in the upcoming six minutes because this will be intense. You better look at the slides, not at me. Just a hint. <laughs> so we will start with the first four instructions, which should actually sound or look familiar from x86. And um, the important part here is that in ARM, you have either 32-bit instructions or 16-bit instructions. In thumb mode, uh, which is important because we will use thumb mode for our shell code. The next four instructions are less trivial. The first one puts the address of a label into a register. The store byte stores a byte to the address found in R0 at offset 3. A BX is like uh, a jump in x86. And SVC is a security vacation club. OK, that's a lie, but the rest is true. So it's actually used to invoke system functions. And um, regarding the registers, we only need to cover the general purpose registers because we will need them um, for our arguments. And R7 will contain our syscall number. NPC is like EIP in x86. <sighs> so, breathe. <laughs> OK, so since we want our shell code to be free of any null bytes, we need to avoid instructions that cause null bytes. Therefore, in order to clear out a register, we will just sub um, the register or store it. And instead of null terminating the bin as eight string, we will uh, put a placeholder and replace the placeholder during runtime using a store byte instruction. And um, another way to greatly reduce the possibility of having null bytes is using thumb instructions, because they are only two bytes wide, right? So we just set the least significant bit of the next instruction to 1, and then we branch to that instruction, uh, to that address with BX, branch and exchange. So since this is a common technique for uh, reducing null bytes in shell code, we can use this snippet for our Yaga rule. Um, and the only variable part in this case is the register, because it can be any general purpose register. You can say R1, R2, R3, it doesn't really matter we will replace it with a question mark. So this is the Yara snippet, the first one. We will write a reverse shell, which means that in blue you see the system functions that we will translate and represent an assembly, and in uh, red you see the arguments that we will pass to these functions via registers. So in this case, we will cover socket, connect, dub2, and execv functions. So um, this is a template that we will use to understand how um, a function is represented in assembly. First, you see the function, its arguments, and the syscall number. In the middle, you see the uh, registers and the arguments. And on the right, you see the instructions, um, which we will need uh, to, yeah, in order to, to, to pass the arguments into the register. So the first uh, function is the socket function with the parameters um, 2, 1, and 0. The first two arguments we just pass via move. Um, the third we just clear out with sub to avoid null bytes. We put the syscall number into R7 and we invoke with SVC. And we save the result in R4. This snippet we can also use for our Yaga rule, uh, which means that the first two instructions are rather static. And in red, you see the variable. Um, parts and the blue instruction means that it can also be split into two instructions to achieve the same result. So as you can see on the bottom left, there are three ways of how to zero out or clear out uh, a register. And on the right, you see two different ways of how to put an immediate value into a register, because all the ARM processors don't allow you to put a larger immediate value into a register. Therefore, it needs to be split. So we need to be on the safe side and just say, all right. Um, the connect function has the following arguments, and the only thing we need to do here is to reference our struct in R1, then we the struct length in R2, again, we just increase um, R7, and we invoke. And we also replace the placeholder FF with a zero byte dynamically. 
uh, the three adapt to calls. Um, here again, every time we invoke adapt to function, we need to put the saved SOC ID back into R0. And the second parameter is just first zero, then one, then two. And again, um, this is call number into R7, then we invoke each time. And the snippet can also be represented in Java, <laughs> in Yara. So um, yeah, in this case, the sub can be either a XOR or, uh, or a move. And the move can also be an add. And as you can see in red, the R4 can be any general purpose register, which is also variable. And SVC can also be SVC zero. Therefore, it's also variable. And last but not least, we also need to spawn a shell. And we just reference the address of our business age string into R0. R1 and R2 are zero. Then we replace the X placeholder with a zero byte during runtime using store byte function instruction, sorry, and 11 as a syscall number. And this is a very cheap rule of how to detect the exec V. Um, invocation and the bin sh string. And again, SVC can also be SVC zero, because if you don't care about zero bytes, and um, the bin sh uh, placeholder can be any placeholder. That's why it's also variable in this represented with question marks. And that sums up. Here is your reverse shell. So it's easier than you thought, isn't it? And in blue, you see the, the, the system functions. And in red, you see the arguments that we just passed to the registers. And this is our reverse shell free of null bytes in thumb mode. And the corresponding Yaga rule uh, looks like this. I also included the, um, the ARM versions of these snippets, because we only covered the thumb versions. And yeah, I hope you learned something and will now write your own reverse shells and write your own Yara detection um, rules. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>